in the name of Lord Jesus, we continue with uh, our study on the doctrine of the Sabbath. Yeah. Uh, we turn back to uh, Genesis chapter 2. Now, early on, we mentioned in our first lesson, uh, we mentioned about uh, four verbs. Um, are used in Genesis chapter 2 verse 2 to verse 3. Okay, we have we have studied the first one. Uh, now we come to uh, the second one. Yeah, in, uh, here it says God rested on the seventh day. Okay. Um, uh, God being a spirit, uh, he does not need to rest and he has chosen to rest and to basically show us an example. All right. So we need to rest uh, because uh, he rested. All right. Now, we also mentioned that uh, in, in Exodus chapter 20, he rested the seventh day. So, you know, the day is, 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 is you know, is like, is put to rest if you, if you, if you like. Right. So no activity on the, on the day and the day is, is resting. Um, now we find that whenever God, yeah, you know, whatever uh, He does, uh, He always, you know, does it with an intentions of you know, bringing in eternity, right? and because God is a spirit and He is eternal, and without exceptions, uh, we find that the resting here is, should stretch to eternity, if you like. Yeah, now, I want you to read the Hebrews. Yeah, turn to Hebrews. Uh, we said he instituted the Sabbath with uh, with eternity in mind. Okay. Now we turn to uh, Hebrews chapter four. Yeah. Uh, we read. Uh, Verse 9 and verse 10. Yeah. Uh, Hebrews chapter 4, uh, verse 9 and verse 10. Uh, there remains therefore a rest uh, for the people of God. Now verse 10. For he who has entered his rest, uh, entered into God's rest, has himself also ceased from his works as God did from his. Now, verse 9 talks about you know, uh, a rest for the people in the future. And obviously this is like a uh, a grand Sabbath, you know, right? Uh, if you like. Okay, uh, verse 10. Uh, this this rest is given to those who has entered uh, God's rest. Right? God's rest. Now the question is, when did God rest? He rested on the seventh day after what? His creations, right? After the creation of the universe. Uh, that is the day that he rested. Now, so for those who enter God's rest, should do the same. Uh, cease from uh, their works, just like God did from his. Right. Now, you find that here God uh, talks about the connections between Sabbath and uh, the uh, and the eternal uh, Sabbath, Sabbath in the future. Right. Now, so from the very beginning, yeah, uh, from the point of inceptions. God has already thought about what? Eternal sab Sabbath rest for us. Okay. Now, so again, we can see the, uh, the, what? the kind intention of God. Yeah. And so what God has instituted is not like, you know, uh, short-lived. It's not like only for a short term. And it stretches beyond the time and space. Yeah. And he wants that to be with us eternally. That is the kind intention of God. They are from the observance of the Sabbath or from the institution of the Sabbath. Yeah, we can see this very clearly. Right. Now, I think the main point here is this. Yeah? Now, if we do not enter into God's rest, then obviously we will not be like, qualified, if you like, yeah, to enjoy this uh, future Sabbath rest. You know, that's why the church teaches that, you know, observing the Sabbath is closely connected to 
our salvation. It's from the Bible, right? Now, God rested, therefore we need to again, what, rest, yeah, again, uh, entry into His rest, right, to do the same. Now, I think, I think you know, um, sometimes it's hard to change the, uh, the mindset of the older generation, but I think it should be, you know, something that the younger generation should, should do more. Right, so I think you should, like, you know, define your, your, your religious life in such a way that, you know, um, the Sabbath must be given uh, wholeheartedly or totally to the Lord. And you need to believe that God will bless you. You, you need to have this faith in Him. Right? Because this is what the, the, the Bible teaches. Okay, now, we always say that the, the institution of the Sabbath is pre-Mosaic, even before Moses you know, was born. Right? Uh, so it stretches all the way back you know, to the time of God's creations. And look at you know, the, the, the mind of God and from the point of uh, its institution right to you know, eternal life. I think, I think, I think uh, it tells us about, you know, uh, God's desire you know, to be with His people. Uh, really, that is the kind intention of God. Okay, so it's about rest. Now we come back, yeah, uh, to Genesis. Now, can I ask you a question? Yeah? How many blessings uh, are mentioned in chapter one of Genesis? How many blessings? How many blessings are mentioned? Okay, let's let's read Genesis chapter one. From verse one, I'm joking. From verse one to okay, we read uh, verse um, verse twenty two. Uh, uh, verse twenty two, and God blessed them saying be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters and the sea and let birds multiply on the earth right and so the evening and the morning were the fifth day so on the fifth day after god has created you know the living creatures in the sea and um, he blessed them uh, and also the birds uh, all the creatures uh, can be seen from verse 20 as well now I think the blessing is related to what uh, is connected to um, procreation. Uh, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. <coughs> now obviously this blessing is for man as well because man is to enjoy all the all the fishes or whatever. Okay, now you read also <coughs> verse twenty eight. Yeah, verse twenty eight, chapter one, verse twenty eight. Then God blessed them and God said to them. Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. This is like the second blessing mentioned in um, uh, the book of Genesis. Uh, it's talking about you know the extension of life from one generation to another. Right. Now I think I think from here we can see the the physical aspects of God's blessing of His creations. Now when we come to chapter two, okay, chapter two. Now, God blessed the seventh day. The day was blessed. Okay, can I ask you a question. What kind of blessing attached to uh, the seventh day? What kind of blessing God has given to the seventh day? Uh, obviously, you need to look at other part of the scriptures. Yeah. Yeah, to understand the the types of blessing God has uh, assigned yeah, to the seven day, if you like. Okay. What are the blessings? Anyone? No. All right. Let's look at it. Uh, <coughs> 
a passage eh, from Isaiah. Uh, we turn to Isaiah 56. Um, 56 Okay, we read uh, verse um, uh, Verse 1 and verse 2 okay. Now, thus says the Lord Keep justice and do righteousness uh, For my salvation is about to come And my righteousness to be revealed uh, Now, verse 2 Blessed is the man who does this And the son of man who lays hold of, on it Who keeps from defiling the Sabbath and keep his hand from doing any uh, evil here. Yeah. Now, I think there are, there are at least three things mentioned. One is to to keep justice and do righteousness. And the second is to keep from defiling the Sabbath. And the third, keep uh, from doing any evil. All right? Now, Sabbath is mentioned. Yeah. Okay? Now, uh, obviously, when you talk about keeping the Sabbath, we need to uh, be be right as well, you know, in our life before God, we need to do justice and righteousness, okay? Now, now look at verse um, what is that? Verse 4 verse 4 yeah, verse 4 uh, For thus says the Lord to the eunuchs who keep my Sabbath and, and choose what pleases me and fast and hold fast my covenants uh, even to them I will give in my house and within my walls a place and a name better than that of sons and daughters I'll give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off now, so it seems to me that here it talks about what? a name that is within the walls right? now, within the walls uh, of the house of God yeah? you know, it's like within what? Uh, the community of God or within the salvations of God. We have mentioned about walls, wall represents what? Salvations. So it's like salvation is ensured. Right? So you you cannot you cannot we cannot afford to defile the Sabbath. Alright, we shall explain later on, yeah. I think maybe tomorrow. Yeah. We shall explain tomorrow. Um how to observe the Sabbath, why it is necessary to observe the Sabbath. Because there are so many churches out there uh, believing that Sabbath is not essential for salvation. Okay, we shall talk about that. Now, so first, the blessing as far as I'm concerned is, you know, and is connected to salvation. And not just, obviously, not just keeping the Sabbath, all the other things must be done, but Sabbath, keeping the Sabbath is included okay now we look at the same chapter same chapter um, verse 6 and verse 7 and also the sons of foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to serve him and to love the name of the Lord to be his servants everyone who keeps from defiling the Sabbath and hold fast my covenant even them I will bring to my holy mountain now in the context of uh, the Old Testament scriptures, the holy mountain is a reference to the church. Okay, it's a reference to the church. Now, I want you to read uh, Isaiah, chapter uh, chapter two. Okay. Let me see. Chapter. Okay, we first read chapter 2, uh, verse 2. Now it comes to pass, verse two. Now it comes to pass in the latter days that the mountains of the Lord's house shall be established on the top of the mountain, and 
shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow to it. Uh, we always say this is a reference to uh, um, the establishment of the church, right? Uh, so the mountains of the Lord's house. Okay, And we also believe that the uh, the holy mountain is also the church of God. Yeah? To my holy mountain. Now, meaning the person will have a share what, in the church of God. Okay. Now, that's why I think we shouldn't take this uh, commandment very lightly. Right? We, need, we need to do it with all our hearts. Okay? And keep uh, this uh, commandments of God. Okay. Now, so this, these are some of the blessings I've mentioned in the book of uh, uh, Isaiah. Now, I think the most uh, notable one, obviously, is the future rest. Okay? If we can have a share in the eternity of God, obviously, that is the greatest blessing ever. You know? So, we need to enter into uh, this seven, seven uh, day Sabbath rest uh, so that we can have a share in the future rest. That is the greatest uh, blessing ever. That God has given to us. All right. Okay. Now we come back to uh, Genesis chapter two. All right. Hmm. Okay. Genesis uh, chapter two. <clears throat> now we look at verse three again. Yeah. The last one it says, "Sanctify the." Yeah. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, okay, or set it apart, or set it aside okay, uh, for himself. Now, quite clearly, yeah, the day, the seventh day, does not belong to us. Okay, I think we need to have this concept very clear in our mind. Yeah. Remember, the seventh day does not belong to us, it belongs to God. Okay, we read again, uh, Exodus chapter uh, 20, Okay, we read verse 10, yeah, the first part of verse 10. Okay. Okay, chapter 20, verse 10. Okay, the first part. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. Is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. Quite clear, the Sabbath day does not belong to us. It belongs to God. So, on that day, we must follow what the Lord says. Right? That's why we cannot say, oh, no problem, we are under grace, we can do what we want. That's not true. That is not what the Bible, you know, teaches us about. It's not true. Okay? Now, turn to also... Um, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 5 yeah? uh, Deuteronomy chapter 5 Alright, we look at uh, verse 14 yeah? Verse 14 uh, Verse 14 Now, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God yeah, Again, it's quite uh, clearly mentioned uh, that the seventh day does not belong to us, right? So, in a way, put it this way, okay? We have no rights to you know, lay claim over the, you know, the, the use of that day, you know, according to our own will, because it belongs to God. So, you know, uh, to, to, to make sure that, you know, uh, we can make good use of that day according to... Uh, the will of God, we have to follow, you know, what the Bible says, right? So, it's for the Lord, it's for the Lord, it's not for ourselves, right? So, the seventh day, okay? Now, so, now, I also want you to read, uh, what is it? Um, back to, uh, back to uh, Exodus chapter 20, chapter 20. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, we read Exodus chapter 20 again. Oh. Alright. Now verse 11. Verse 11. Now we mentioned about God rested the seventh day. Now I want you to read the last part of verse 11. Yeah. <coughs> now what does it say? And therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Now, I think the word tells us about the degree of honor that we need to give to, you know, the seven-day Sabbath, right? I think this is a, a very strong word, yeah. And it tells us about the solemnity of the day, right? Uh, how sacred the day is. Right? That's why we need to hallow it. Remember the, the word in the, what well, used in the Lord's Prayer? Hallowed be thy name. You understand what I'm saying? I think the same degree of honor must be given to the observant of the Sabbath as well. It's not like, you know, we can just do anything we want. I think judging from the Old Testament scriptures, at least, yeah, we can find that you know, that kind of uh, sanctity, if you like, must be attached to the Sabbath observance. Okay? No, I think I think the uh, uh, fine tuning of our mindset is essential here, you know, to to help us keep the Sabbath more more appropriately. Okay, so you you hallow it today. How how do you how do you hallow it the name of God? Yeah, you give what absolute due respect to the name of God. Is that also? You cannot call the name of God in vain. So now, in terms of observing the Sabbath, how should you observe? With the same level of uh, respect, right? must be given to the uh, keeping of the Sabbath. Right. Now, coming back to the, the idea of uh, sanctified. Right? Now, sanctified means being uh, put aside or set aside. Now, we know that God himself uh, it's a holy God. Right? It's a holy God. And so for those who keep the Sabbath, we strive to become sanctified as well in our life. Uh, it's like a weekly reminder to us that, you know, to draw close to God, to come to the presence of God, require us, what? To strive towards sanctification. Uh, that's the idea. So. Okay? Uh, so, by just looking at the institution of the Sabbath, we can see what God has done for us. You know, His intentions, His kind intention that He has for us as, as children of God, right? Children of God. Okay, I think there is one idea which is not recorded in, uh, in Genesis that I think we should look at it as well. Okay, we turn to... Uh, Um, what is it? Uh, we turn to Exodus, yeah. Okay, chapter 20, 23. Uh, turn to Exodus, chapter 23. <laughs> Uh, we read uh, verse 12. Uh, Exodus chapter 23, verse 12. Yeah. Now, six days you shall do your work, and on the seventh day you shall rest, and your ox and your donkey may rest, and the son of your female servant and the strangers may be refreshed. Right? Refreshed. Now, what does it mean to be refreshed? You know, donkey, you know, your son, your children, everyone within has to rest. Okay. Now, I want you to read uh, chapter 31 as well, yeah? Okay. Chapter 31. Exodus, the same book. <coughs> uh, verse 17, yeah? Uh, Exodus chapter 31 verse 17. 
Now, it is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. Did God need to be refreshed? No. But the Bible says he was refreshed. Right? So I think, I think keeping the Sabbath yeah, tells us about how our, our, not only our, our physical self you know, uh, can be refreshed and actu actually more importantly is the soul, it's the spirit that can be refreshed. Okay? Now, again I say God did not need to be refreshed but here the Bible says he was refreshed after he what, rested his work. So the only way to be refreshed is to rest to keep the sabbath to keep the sabbath we said to keep it properly and then we shall be refreshed right now we always say to be refreshed mean like to be revitalized or sometimes our faith is down we need you know uh, to to reju we need to be rejuvenated you know stuff like that okay now i also want you to read a uh, 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 what a passage here yeah? Uh, turn to Acts of the Apostles. Uh, we read chapter 3. Okay, we read uh, verse 19. Huh? Hmm. Uh, I think here it gives us the idea of the, the meaning of being refreshed or what ref uh, refreshed mean. Okay, now repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Right? Now, so, uh, you know, being refreshed is only made possible uh, when one, you know, uh, should come to the presence of the Lord. Right? And that's the idea. Right? Being refreshed. Uh, being close to God on the Sabbath, uh, drawing close to, to Him, uh, getting uh, access or entry into His rest, that we shall be refreshed. Then again, we said that when we observe the Sabbath, right attitude is absolutely essential. Okay, must be kept properly. You know, you cannot, a person cannot be refreshed uh, on the Sabbath while doing worldly stuff. Okay, enjoying himself, you know, allow, you know, the desire to dictate his own actions or whatever. So it's not possible. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, follows God's way, then we shall be refreshed. Uh, because God himself was refreshed as well on the Sabbath. Okay, so these are some of the key concepts uh, in relation to... Uh, the institutions of the uh, Sabbath, right? And that's why we find that, yeah, we realize that the, the observance of the Sabbath command is so essential. So essential. Okay. Now, I think I want to go through some of the passages uh, uh, concerning the Sabbath. Right? And so each time, you know, when we uh, come to the Sabbath day, you know, the then we would know what are the things that we need to bear in mind, right? Now, we, we turn to Exodus again. Turn back to Exodus. Now, we look at chapter 20, yeah? All right, chapter 20. Uh, verse 11, yeah, verse 11. Now, chapter 20, verse 11, For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth and the sea and all that is in them and rested the seventh day. All right. Now, here it talks about God's creations, I, I think, yeah. You know, on every Sabbath, yeah, we are reminded of our relationship with the 
Heavenly Father. Now, I think this is quite crucial. Sometime in our life, we have forgotten that you know uh, there is a Master who is above us, who is who must be, you know, uh, in control of life. Uh, but because of whatever we call it our own forgetfulness, you know, we tend to live our own life. Right? Now, so I think the Sabbath uh, clearly reminds us that we are the created beings of God and and Jesus Christ is our creator and there is a relationship between us and the father so and on our part yeah uh, we are to what submit to with authority and power in life right? that is a weekly reminder you know sabbath is not just a, a, a weekly rest for us or a pattern of rest for us is also a weekly reminder of our relationship with God. Right? Uh, he is the creator. He created the universe. And, and we are to subject ourselves under the authority and power of God. Right? I, I, think, I think the reminder really tells us that we, we need to be submissive to God's rules and authority. Okay? Now, like what we have been saying from the very beginning, you know, no one is above God's law. No one is above what? The doctrines of the church. No one is. Yeah, we are all under, yeah, under the control of God. Okay. So that's the reminder. Okay, now we move on to uh, chapter 5 of Deuteronomy. Look at uh, Deuteronomy chapter 5. Mm. Now, I think this is like the second set of uh, commandments given after the first, uh, you know, the first tablets of stones have been uh, broken by the, this uh, Moses you know, when he saw that the people were worshipping the uh, idol, yeah. And so he threw uh, these two tablets of stone. Now here God asked him to go up to the mountain again yeah, and given him the same Ten Commandments. But as for the Seventh Commandment, the meaning is slightly different. So. Okay, or well, the content is slightly different. Uh, look at chapter 5, uh, verse 15. Yeah? Uh, verse 15. Hmm. <coughs> Okay, verse 15. Now, and remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God brought you out from there by a mighty hand. What? And by what? And by an outstretched arm, therefore the Lord commanded, the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. Right? Now, so, it's like telling the people, yeah, the Exodus generations, that there were slaves before yeah, in the land of Egypt. Yeah, they were under the clutches of Pharaoh. Yeah, they were uh, they were put under what uh, you know uh, under this uh, the control of uh, Pharaoh and the Egyptians. They were slaves in the land, and now by the mighty deeds of God, they were set free. They were set free. Uh, I think here is a reminder of God's uh, deliverance and God's redemption. Right? Now, I think, I think this is very applicable to us as well. Uh, we, we were sinners before in the past. Uh, even at time after our conversion, you'll find that we still uh, uh, make mistakes in life. And God, uh, you know, uh, being so gracious to us, you know, redeem us from our sin. Uh, so, Keeping the Sabbath is like a re weekly reminder of that fact we have been saved by God. Right? We have been saved by God. And so we owe our entire existence, especially our spiritual existence to God. If it, if it has not been uh, for Him, then none of us uh, would have been saved. Okay? And so we need to remember that. Remember that. We always say we need motivation, you know, inspiration from God. I think every Sabbath, yeah, we can have, we can draw a lot of inspiration from what? From the Sabbath that we observe. 
we can have enough strength from what, the Sabbath that we observe. Yeah, if we know how to keep it yeah, properly. All right? It's a reminder to us that He saved us from sin. Okay. Now, I think there are some key words that in this passage that I want you to remember as well. Yeah? Now, I want you to first read verse 12. You know, this, uh, look at the word commanded you. Right? Uh, it's like it's a charge given to us that the Sabbath must be observed. Right? And the Sabbath must be must be kept holy. Uh, and the Sabbath must uh, be kept in such a way that we can gain entry into the rest of God. Now, verse 15 also mentioned the word command. Right? Therefore, the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. It's a command from God. Now, I think, I think the, the point of contention is this, yeah? Because we know that in the New Testament time, we still need to keep the commandments, right? Is this not part of the Ten Commandments? Yeah? If you look at the contents of the Fourth Commandment, has it been changed in the New Testament? No, I don't think so. Yeah. It's still binding, put it this way. So that's why we have been commanded to keep the Sabbath. Right? Now, we, I think we have explained the word command. Right? It's like a church. There's, it's not an, put it this way, it's not an option. It's a command. It's something that you, we have to do. Right? We have to do. Okay? Now, we turn to uh, Ezekiel. Yeah, look at Ezekiel now. I think before we close, yeah, I want to I want you to think about this. How do we remember the Sabbath? The Bible said we need to remember the Sabbath. How do we remember the Sabbath? Think about that, okay? What does it mean to remember? Alright, now we come we look at Ezekiel first, yeah. Uh, chapter uh, chapter 20 okay uh, Ezekiel chapter 20 uh, we read uh, verse 12 and then we read uh, uh, verse 20, okay. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 12, and then verse 20. Yeah? Okay. Now, moreover, I also gave them my Sabbaths to be a sign between them and me, that they might know that I am the Lord who sanctifies them. Okay. Now, I think here is another shed of meaning or significant attached to uh, the observant of the Sabbath. That is, the people of God are reminded that, you know, uh, God is the Lord. He is the... Now, again, if you look at the one, the, the word in English, L-O-R-D, yeah, in, in capital letters, indicating He is the only true God, and He is the what? He is the only uh, uh, self-existent God. Right? I am the Lord. And beside me, there is no other God. Beside me, there is no other being who is capable of being self-existent. Uh, simple as that. Right? He is the only Lord God. Uh, L-O-R-D. Okay. Now, aside from that, it also tells us He is the one who sanctifies. Now, only God can sanctify us. Yeah? Only by observing His words, then we can be sanctified. Alright. Okay, now we move on to verse 20. Uh, verse 20. Oh. Can you see the same word as you? Hallowed my Sabbath, and there will be a sign between me and you that you may know that I am the Lord of God, your God. Right? Now how do we know? How can we know that He is the only Lord, Lord God, the true God, when we what? Give give Him the due respect, you know, owes to Him. Right? Now, so in this case, we need to hallow the Sabbath, respect the Sabbath. Yeah. Just like we would what 
respect the name of God. Simple. The same word in English, at least. It's a very strong word. Yeah. Okay. Now, so I, I personally feel that, you know, the mindset has to be fine-tuned. Right? To know how important it is to observe the Sabbath. Right? It's not about, it's not about uh, being uh, uh, restrictive. Or it's not about being, uh, you know, uh, stringent or whatever you call it. Yeah. It's not about being uh, legalistic. Yeah, it's about it's about you know being able to 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 understand the full extent of keeping the Sabbath. You know, what kind of joy and blessing we can re- receive uh, from uh, observing the Sabbath. Right? Now, like what we have said from the very beginning, everything that God has done is with a clear intention of you know bringing what benefits to us, of giving or providing us with His grace. But that's the the mindset that we need to have in observing the Sabbath. Okay, now we move on to uh, Hebrews, yeah, the one we have read before, uh, chapter four. Okay. Uh, we read uh, verse 9 and verse 10 again. Yeah? Uh, this is the uh, uh, a verse about, you know, uh, God's uh, future rest for His chosen people. Right? Uh, therefore remains, there, there, there remains therefore a rest for the people of God. Yeah, for us. Uh, now for he who has entered his rest has himself also cease from his work as God did from his. Now you can see the connections, yeah. Uh, so without entering into the rest of God, you can't what? You can't uh, be saved. Right? Put it this way. Now I think this verse also is a very strong verse to uh, to back up the idea that you know Sabbath must be kept on the seventh day. You know why? Because God rested on the seventh day. He did not rest on the first day. He did not rest on Sunday. He rested on the on Saturday. Yeah. So if we if we said we we rest on Sunday and then we miss the point because we are not able to gain rest into gain entry into his rest. Yeah? And we enter into our own rest. To me in a way is not very helpful, not very useful. Okay? Now come back to my questions. How what does it mean to remember the Sabbath? Okay. We turn to chapter twenty. Exodus. I'm still thinking about it. Maybe you can help me out. Okay, what does it mean to remember the Sabbath? Chapter 20, verse 8. Yeah. What does it mean to, to remember the Sabbath? Remember the Sabbath day. Okay, we turn to Deuteronomy uh, to as well. Uh, chapter 5 yeah? chapter 5 I think it also mentioned remember is it? yes I know verse 15 remember that you were a slave in the land no. okay but I think in Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 12 is that observe the Sabbath day uh, in Exodus chapter 20 verse 8 it says remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy or to observe it holy. Now what does it mean to remember? How do you remember? Is it not a is it not a uh, something that you do on a weekly basis? How can you not remember? What does it mean to remember? Anyone? How many of you have this experience of not rem- of not remembering the Sabbath? Anyone? No, I don't think so. 
Have you ever forgotten about the Sabbath? No? Then why remember? You don't know? I don't know either. Yes? Can you explain? Have you ever forgotten about his death before? No? Then why remember? There must be a reason. Okay. Okay. Let let me rephrase my question. <laughs> okay, let me rephrase my question. <laughs> okay. Now, does does remembering the Sabbath still apply to us today? No. <laughs> So if, we, if it doesn't apply to us, then why do we keep the Sabbath? Like what? Like, um, are we about Deuteronomy or are we talking about uh, <laughs> talking about Exodus. <laughs> Refresh my question again. <laughs> can someone help me so that they can understand now too? Now we we said we follow the fourth commandment, yeah? yeah. Okay. And one part of the fourth commandment is about remembering the Sabbath. Uh, oh, oh, okay, we keep the Sabbath. Does it still apply to us? But well, now you change your mind, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so after rephrasing my my question, then he understands what I'm saying. Okay. So. How, how do you remember the Sabbath? I think tonight you are free, am I? So you, <laughs> most probably yeah. you've got nothing to do. Remind, oh. Remember okay. the Sabbath so means to keep the Sabbath. To remember the Sabbath means to yeah. keep the and, Sabbath. Uh, how to keep the Sabbath according to the uh, Isaiah chapter 58, mm. verse 13 yes. and verse 14. Uh, his his answer is to um, Edward anyway, brother Edward. Um, to remember the Sabbath means what? Keeping the Sabbath, right? To keep the Sabbath, we have to look at Isaiah, according to him, chapter fifty-eight, verse thirteen to fourteen. Yes. Are you asking a question or you're answering my question? <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah. I'm thinking in terms of first Peter. Mm. Where Peter talks about uh, we say remember. Mm. Uh, first Peter chapter chapter 
Rachel, and where are you? <laughs> okay. You mean remember all the points that I've covered? <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> yes. Remember means we actually understand what this was covered with. So um, when in the Bible God says remember, remember him, it doesn't actually mean that people have forgotten him. Because they've not understood who God is to them and they've gone to worship. Okay. I think the key is what you just mentioned that um, we need to remember the God, the, the one that created heaven and earth, or the one that um, uh, before the time uh, was the only true God. The same applies. The same applies today. When we come to the supper, we need to really remember that um, we are worshiping the true God. Okay. I'll I'll share my understanding with you tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Let's say a silent prayer. <laughs>